painting won the Archibald Prize in 1994, but it caused a bit of a stir, didn't it? Well, it, it, yeah, it did. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really sure why, but uh, it was just a different time. You know, people were uh, much more critical, I think. Prior to this, I, I just found it very difficult to get an exhibition in Sydney. I went to various galleries, even in Melbourne, and I found that they just didn't want to show my work. And I had one of those, you know, despondent sort of times where you just, well, this is it, I'm going to do what I want to do. So I just did this big painting, I set it all up. And, um, and I'm a, an amateur pianist, as you know. I used to play music with John Reichardt, chamber music, with John and with other people. And I just did this big sort of large genre, a large sort of group portrait. I think some people just objected that it was uh, not a single portrait of someone, you know, the idea of a definition of a portrait. Uh, it was more of a genre piece. My grandmother is, is what's known as, as a white widow. Um, she comes from a very small village in Calabria in southern Italy. And when my mother was uh, just a few weeks old, my grandfather came to Australia. And the idea was, you know, uh, this was common, the idea was he'd stay here for a few years, get some money and bring the family out. But he ended up staying in Australia. He was, he was a tailor in Woolloomooloo. He stayed here for 25 years. And she's known as a white widow because if you think of a small village in Calabria in those days, you know, women really had no rights she couldn't divorce, she couldn't get a lover or, you know, she was just very restricted. She just had to put up with that. When I look at some of these paintings now, you know, from 30, 20 years ago, I, I could see a lot of symbolism in it. I didn't actually design it. I'm, I'm not conscious of symbolism when I actually create the paintings. But um, I'm just wondering, looking at that couch now and I'm seeing the birds, you know, I mean, I can see my grandmother's just been... You know, caught in this, this sort of cage, really, in, in Italy, you know, being a white widow and really being restricted. And yet she's got birds, you know. I don't know if she's finally liberated now. We're looking at Li Lin Chin here. And these puppets and, well, dolls yes, and yes. fabrics, they, they do pop up in your works from time to time. Well, they're just so beautiful to paint, you know, and they're expressive and they're sort of like almost, almost human. And I'm noticing the screen. I mean, in those days, I just used the screen as a backdrop. But later on, when, when there were times in the evening, late afternoon, when the light would come filtering through the screen and it would go onto a wall or would go into a still life, it tended to break the form. You know, these paintings are very strong in form. I've really emphasised three-dimensional form. But when the light comes through the screen, it, it breaks up the, the form. It sort of, you get this sort of scattering of light and particles. I love this painting because it's got the piano in it, which is so yes, important yes, to you in yes. your life. This is a very early painting. It's probably the first major painting of mine in my old studio in my parents' house. And my father was a, a, a musician. He was a bit of a frustrated musician. He used to play the piano. And it's, I've got the map that, that I've had for years. And I think you can see there's a very strong Vermeer influence coming through. And also very early Renaissance. I've always loved the early Renaissance. I love that sense of geometry that they've had in their paintings. Well, what is it about Vermeer that appealed to you? Vermeer is just unique. I mean, it's, it's hard to explain. I mean, you look at his contemporaries and they paint the same subject matter and you think, oh, these are, you know, you can see they're, they're, they're Dutch interiors of the age. And you look at a Vermeer and you, you don't think that. You're just so caught up, bewildered by uh, the formalities of the painting, by the light and the design and the composition. It just goes beyond being a, a, another Dutch interior. You don't even think of it as being Dutch. I don't. If you look at a De Hoog or Gabriel Metsu, one of his contemporaries, and it's like, this, this is a beautifully painted Dutch interior, you know, it's wonderful. But you look at Vermeer and it's the idea of being Dutch, to me, doesn't even come in. Obviously he is, but... Just the way it, his composition, uh, the design, the light he gets. Um, there's, a, there's a stillness and a beauty I, I, I think is unique in that. So now we're coming into more of your recent works in this next section of the gallery. It looks amazing. They're mainly still life works here in this section. And this is, this is from your home, isn't it? Yes, there's, there's two main themes. As you say, there's the still lives and the garden. And there's also a number of sort of Vermeerish type genre paintings, mainly of my two daughters. It's difficult to do a still life um, with, with the landscape because if you, if you uh, sort of, a, if you paint it realistically, which is what I do, you find you have a lot of problems with the tone because it's normally a still life against a, a window would be very, very dark, you know, and I've been playing with that and I've, I've actually brought out a lot of the colours of the still life 
while trying to keep the, the relatively dark tones. Mm. And I've, I find the landscape, it just, it just gives it that much um, extra, extra depth. The interesting thing with this one, which is in a few other ones as well, is this wonderful sort of bamboo-ish type screening yeah. in the background. Yeah. yeah. As we are talking before about how light through the screen um, can actually, you know, you have a speckled effect and can, and can break an object up into pieces. I, I found that, that a bam if you see something like the, a landscape through the bamboo screen, it tends to make the, almost the, the landscape vibrate. It, it sort of gives it this, this other dimension. It's, you know, you, you sort of see it and then you don't see it. As you say, I've, I've used it in a number of paintings. And, and I love including this, this our old dog Seely who passed away a few years ago. You know, I mean, if you put an, an animal in a painting, it just gives it a sort of a bit of an extra dimension. I'm not sure why. It's just um, maybe there's some mythological evolutionary connection that we have with with animals. I think it's always good if you if you if you love an artist or a painting or something, it's good to actually copy it and sort of get it out of your system. You know, and. You know, with the Vermeer, with the Renaissance artists and Balthus, is, you know, I did a series of paintings based on Balthus. Anyone who knows him will recognise the, the, the woman with the hair back. It was a common theme with him. And that's my lounge room at home in the late afternoon when the light would come in. And technically, you know, I used to, if you, if you go up close, you can see there's a lot of this almost like pointless, this sort of speckled mm. um, technique. And, and I've realised that you, if, you, if you put on a colour in, in small amounts or, you know, the size of a, what, like an, an ant's head or something, it's, uh, you can put a very bright colour into a dark area and if it's small, you know, it has an effect of just bringing it to life. Yeah, totally. And it gives you a texture and, a, you know, it's, it's the surface is a bit like facets of a diamond where light sort of um, is reflected off it. So if people come to the show, they're going to also see good number of self-portraits. Well, there was a period when I did a lot of self-portraits. Um, most of them are, are hanging upstairs. I was surprised to see the variety in the self-portraits. It's not the same style. I've always, I've always experimented with different painting techniques. You know, I would change the colour of the background. I changed the colour of what I was wearing. Um, some of them are textured, some of them are, are glazed. Um, some of them are a combination. I just find it very hard to find this, do the same painting over and over again. <laughs>